Okay, so continuing on from our last video, let's go ahead and punch this in and let's talk about what this says because it's important here. Whoops, don't want that. Let's see here. I, I resized that with the free transform tool and it stretched the text. I just want this box uh, with the regular selection tool to stretch out there. So if yours changed, uh, know that you just want to grab a handle with the um, selection tool as opposed to the uh, free transform tool which can stretch the text. Okay, so the thing is what we want to do here to solve our issue of not knowing exactly what size this was, and I mean we could figure it out. We, we did that earlier when we made it. We could uh, go back to the last state that it was the right size, which is right here, and then open up the info panel and get that info about it. But a much easier way to do that is just to copy this last frame where it was good. So that's what this statement here refers to. So again, to, to copy a frame, you just click on it to select it, and then I release the mouse and then I click and drag and hold down the option key, release the mouse first, then the option key, and I now have a copy of it. So I want the statement to come up first as usual and then a second later for it to actually do its thing. So last state was right there so we want to hold that state for one second so what I'll do is I'll just duplicate this keyframe right here with an F6 move that out to frame 220 and then move this one out to frame 240 right click on there remove the tween so we now have it coming up. The text appears telling us what's going to happen. We get to see that text for a second, and then it actually does its thing going back to normal. So we'll extend and copy that text out with an F6 to here. Previewing the Swift, we can see what happens next here as we get back-to-back um, -back animations. A um, First it squishes that way, then it squishes that way, then it pauses. So let's go ahead and create that in Flash. So here we are with our last animation. We let the text come up. We give it a one second pause. 240 to 260 with our F6. And then 260 to 280 with an F6. In fact, I'll just keep going here, go out to 300 with an F6, and then we'll go back and do what we need to do. So from here to here, nothing. So we'll remove that tween from here to here. That's where we're squishing it this way. So I'll just click on this to select it, hit the Q key. Oh, and it didn't let me select it because I had the playhead over here as opposed to being on the frame that I wanted. So I just click on the frame I want, which pretty much automatically selects it. The last tool I had selected was the free transform tool, so it's all ready to go. And if you remember, first thing it did was an ugly squish like that. And I say ugly squish because it makes the text look so bad. Uh, oh, and I did that actually in the wrong spot. So let me Command Z that, go to where I was supposed to do that and select that again, squish her down, and then so we're going right from a squish that way to a squish the long way. And actually I did get premature, and uh, if you want to do this the right way, I really should have just copied this to here. So let's, uh, it's good to encounter these things though. So if we want to clear this keyframe, remember we right click on it and we select not just clear frame or um, we want clear keyframe. So that blanks that out. Now we can do an F6 and we get that copy of what we had before prior to it, which is the same as what's here. Go to here, drag that out. Nasty. 
and let's go ahead and extend our text. Okay, so now it follows the video, stays there for a second, squishes this way, squishes that way. Next bit of text in here is this. And so again, we want to find the last place that this looked normal. So we're going to leave it all nasty for a second here. Okay, so there it is, normal. Click, click and drag with the option key held down to frame 340. There we go, F6 to extend that text, tells us what's, what we're doing, then we actually do it. I'm all set up with the text in my next keyframes, so all I need to do is actually animate a skew from starting with nothing to the skew over in this keyframe. So again, what I do is grab my free transform tool, and this time instead of putting the mouse near uh, or grabbing one of these I just put it near the item I don't want this we'll talk about that in just a second I want this right there so you put it close enough you get those two little opposing handles and then click and drag and there's your skew and there's your animation to the skew and then from frame 400 to 420, I want to normalize this. So I go back to the last normal frame I had. Click, click, drag with the option key down to frame 420. Accidentally moved this one one too far. Now I have that extra frame there, so I'll click on it. Shift F5, make it go good night. And to rotate or create an animation that involves rotation, what we do is we just do an exact copy of the frame that came before. So here's our starting point. Here's our finishing point. So we do a F6. It automatically put the tween in there for us. If not, we would right click, put the tween on. Uh, we just click anywhere in between the frames and then we go to our ever favorite uh, properties panel. And you can see here under tweening, we have some options and one of them here is rotate. We just go to this drop down here and we select clockwise. It defaults at one time so this is going to go around in a clockwise direction one time between here and here. I'm guessing I mentioned this in passing but to advance your keyframe, like you, you can see I'm running out of space here, there's a couple different ways to do it. One you can just grab the playhead and as you start to scrub it, it just automatically creates more room. The other way to navigate is back and forth like this. If you wanted to jump back to the front of your animation real quickly, you can, of course, do this. But if you want to get back there even quicker, you can use um, these play commands here. And if you click this far left one, it jumps back there very quickly. And if we click this one, it takes us to the very last frame, and then we can go back over here and adjust it. Another thing that you can do down here is you can adjust the, the timeline view. So if you want your frames to become very big or very small, you can do that too. So the next thing that occurs is between 480 and 500, we have that multiple counterclockwise rotation. So to achieve that, Place your cursor somewhere between the first and the last keyframe of the tweens. Go to the properties panel, rotation, select the direction. So in this case it was counterclockwise. And then we'll up this number from one to three. And you can see that per this given space, there's a lot more rotation than here where it just goes around one time. And our next thing to recreate is this partial rotation and the reverse of that. So we're going to have that occur between 520 and 540. So at 540, just going to grab the free transform tool. And this time I'm going to take the mouse and move to one of the corners. And you can see that the mouse changes 
and then I just when I get that icon of the mostly circle I just click and I drag and then if I preview the animation I can see that it does its best to to follow that direction of the rotation that I want. One thing to note here is that the reason that that does its best to follow the rotation is because if I click here look in the properties panel rotate is set to auto. If you change this to none then you would get no rotation there whatsoever but of course in this sense it makes sense to use the auto function so just be aware of that if you ever had a rotation that goes from one place to another and you didn't want it to rotate because it was you know skewing a little bit or something was happening then you may want to be aware of where that is so you could turn it off uh, then we go back to normal and I've explained this several times so this just goes from here to the last normal state and then our next step is to animate from frame 60 to 620 the brightness of this instance of the symbol so we're gonna go from this instance to an instance of the symbol here that the brightness has been brought down so what you need to do is go to your properties of course have this let's go to back to this tool make sure that the symbol is indeed what is selected and then we go to color effects here and toggle this so that we can see the styles and then there's a drop down here and we're gonna select brightness and in this case I'm going to bring the brightness all the way down but just know that you could toggle the brightness just a little bit if you wanted to but in the interest of seeing that you can take it all the way down to where it turns it black that's what we're doing so we get every stage in between during this tween and then we're just going to essentially undo that by the time we get to I'll put an F6 here an F6 here now I could go back and copy the last normal frame but here since we've got an easy button to use we uh, we won't do that so I'm gonna command or right click remove the tween and so from here we're going to the all the brightness removed and then here we're going to and actually uh, well that's one thing at a time here so let's click this let's go to the the brightness and then I believe that it just went back to normal but let me double check that by watching the video yeah that was correct we animate the brightness down back to normal then animate the brightness up and then back to normal so what I need to do is remove some text from here so I can animate the brightness down I need to delete that but before I do let's make sure I have a copy of it here which I do I'll just go one step further do an F6 copy that type out here then we'll go back into here get that text tool in there animate the text down and then when it gets to where it's down all the way it changes to say and back to normal and then like I said we could copy the last normal frame here but since we have a very easy way of changing the brightness we already did that brought that back to the normal state then we're going to leave that there as is for one second doing our F6 then we're going to change the brightness all the way up Oops, hit the wrong F6 again and so here on this keyframe we're going to go back into the brightness by clicking on this going to color effect brightness and cranking it up all the way let's get rid of this tween and now other than the text we're good through that sequence there we only have a couple steps left so let's just double check that we're good with all this goes down animate the brightness down and then and back to normal there's our normal and then let's click this paste in the next bit of type from the document 
and then I can animate the brightness up. We'll get rid of this in a minute, but we may as well, while it's here, 